Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and ToddyTalksCrafts.com. A little while ago, I was looking at some plastic bottle caps and thinking about good ways to upcycle them. And I thought, oh, well, if I use some of my small looms, I could weave little squares and hexagons and, and slightly larger squares two inches, two inches, three inches, and three inches, and make um, neat woven uh, pins or brooches that would make wonderful little gifts that, you know, there are times when you want to have a small handmade gift that you don't want to overwhelm the other person with, oh, they just gave me too much, but you want to have something small, something handmade that says to the other person, I was thinking about you. And so making um, a woven pin or brooch is a great way to do that. So I have woven up these. Um, I'm going to run through. Um, uh, these are, this is the two inch um, Wiz loom from Tuber Ridge Looms. And that's the, the um, new version of the vintage um, weave it or weave it loom and yeah this one I had to fix because the it was missing some nails when I got it from the thrift shop this one is the two inch uh, little weaver from Dubai Ridge Looms this one's a three and a half inch little weaver this one is the three inch pot holder loom and this one is the two inch hexagon loom. So these guys are all from Dewberry Ridge looms. The hexagon loom um, makes a neat triaxial weave that makes quite a neat sort of basket weave. And the, uh, the, the bottle cap that I um, pulled out the recycling bin, I don't even know what it was off of, but anyhow, it makes a great little great little pin. Um, this one is one of the milk jug lids and I just gathered and stitched the outside edge of the same um, three inch square off the pot holder loom and this one I took a, the uh, the lid and I trimmed off the side to make it flatter and make it easier to uh, have the two inch um, square fit over it. And then I thought, well, why don't I cut some smaller circles? And so I cut some smaller circles out of a, I don't know, a plastic container. And then I also, I'm going to turn this one. This is from the base of a um, of a container and I just cut that oval out of that and I'm going to use that to make uh, this into a brooch and I decided that I really like the idea of ovals and so I just cut these ovals out of the heavier plastic. I think that was like from a laundry detergent uh, bottle and so you have to be careful when you're cutting it. Uh, don't use a dull knife. Dull knives are very dangerous. But you can see that you can use all kinds of different things as your base. I'm going to use a uh, this is a juice cap uh, or juice, you know, from a glass juice bottle, and I'm going to use that as the base of this one. And I'll show you the process of um, the ones. Some of them have. Uh, felt backing on the back of them and some of them don't and so I'll show you how I do both processes of the ones that need a little bit of felt on the back and the ones that can gather over enough that I think this will be fine it won't need felt on the back so there's the two two versions some with stitched felt and some without so it's a quick and easy little gift and really fun to make. So I'm going to now uh, 
have to change batteries. And then I'll show you how to do one that you don't need to do the felt on the back and one that you do need to do the felt on the back. This oval is about just, it's two inches long and an inch and a quarter or an inch and three eighths wide at the widest point. So when you're, um, when you've got your, whatever it is you're upcycling, whether it's a lid or a piece of plastic that you've cut out, grab uh, your piece place it on the um, on the square and then pull up on the ends and that's going to gather your weaving around your piece and then thread I'm just going to use one strand I, I wove this with two strands held together but at this point I'm just going to grab one uh, strand and I'm going to go through the um, through one bar of each of the stitches. Let's see if I can get the lights being more cooperative here. Oops, sorry. Yes. There we go. And so you put, uh, you, you're going to gather this edge, pull that through, and pull up on it, and then gather the second edge. Also, just stitching through one bar of the edge stitching. There you go. And pull that up too. So that just pulls together beautifully to make the oval. So now I'm going to tie off this end with one of the other ends. And I've got a quite a large pin here. Not sure if this needle will go through. Ooh. Ah, no, not quite. So since the needle doesn't want to go through, I will just push the strands through. And I'm going to tie those ends off again to make the uh, to secure the safety pin. I'm using quite a big safety pin on this one and I've just tied that through that ring at the end of the safety pin. So now I'm going to use the two of the strands and at the same time that I stitch this opening closed I'm coming through the the back side. I want the front to be able to open um, just fine uh, afterwards of course so you're you're just stitching along this side of the uh, of the pin there you go that not only closes the gap I pulled my ends out here but it uh, stitches the pin to the brooch and I'm going to take this end through the hole of the pin and thread it in and stitch it in really well too. Just stitch that in a few times just to anchor the, um, the other end of the pin. And then we'll weave the ends in of all the ends. There's four ends, of course, that need to be woven in. And I'll trim that. And I'll weave these ends in. going that way. So weave these ends in and then snip those off too. We'll give them a bit of a pull and uh, snip. And then the last end. 
And if you're, um, if you like to be really, really secure, you can use, when you're weaving in some of your other ends, you can use them also to stitch the, the, uh, pin to the, to your brooch. Now, I haven't used uh, any embellishments, uh, beads or charms or anything on any of these brooches, but, because I just like the way the yarn looked just in and of itself, but you know what, you can certainly, um, you can certainly embellish with beads and found objects and other cool stuff, whatever you want. Now, this is super secure now. And because it's a slightly large one, trim off that end. This would hold a scarf or a shawl together really nicely. I really like the oval ones. I think the oval ones are my most favorite. And I actually, I love this elongated oval the best. Okay, so now, um, oh, by the way, you can also use a button um, if you don't want to uh, bother with um, using, you know, plastic lids and stuff. So this one uh, is, I could use this button, would work. Now that this button is an inch and an eighth. And so that would work just fine for, to make uh, a pin with. It's good size, in fact. And so um, with uh, the button that's an inch and an eighth, I won't, uh, I'll be able to um, just stitch the back together the same way I did this one. I won't need um, any uh, felt on the back, but I want to show you how it does look when you do need to, like, how to, how to do the felt. The first thing you'll need to do with your felt is to kind of circle. Now, this is about an inch and a quarter in diameter. So now I cut two tiny little, tiny, tiny little nicks into the uh, felt. And I start with one and I go in one and out the other and I circle it around. There you go. And it's ready to be um, to be secured on the back. And I take a little scrap of the um, of the you know cut off bit of the felt. And you want to have I'm just snipping that off to make it smaller. And you want to have the back of your, let's go a little closer, see how the, the pin can kind of shimmy around a bit? So what you want to do is glue that in place to make that just a little bit more stable and secure. And so I'll get some glue and I'll put a dab of glue on that. But my glue, I have to go, I have to run and grab it, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here, this little square uh, felt, and then I'm going to stick it to the back of the circle so that that pin is now really secure on there. It's not going to float and drift around, and I kind of push it down really well. And so now I'm going to take my little square. Actually, I'm going to use this one and you can see this one is going to definitely need um, you know what that's a bit big so I'm cutting a there I'll use a circle that's just an inch and uh, an inch and a quarter so now, this was woven on the diagonal, so I can't do the, the pull-up routine that I did on the square that was woven on the potholder loom. So what I'll have to do is, is run around the edge 
and pick up the stitches all the way around the edge and pull them through in order to gather them. So I'm going to just finish picking up all the outside edges and then I'll come right back. Okay, so I decided, yes, I am going to do this when uh, using the um, milk jug um, uh, cap that I had trimmed the edge off of, which is um, how I did this one. So I have gone all the way around and gathered the edge. You kind of, it's kind of like making a yo-yo circle when you're quilting. And now I'm pulling up and I'm going to tie a knot there between the ends. You're using the ends. And then I'm going to take a few stitches just just across to anchor that all on there. And you can see that the um, the cap does show through, but I kind of like the turquoise showing through against the purple. That's That doesn't worry me at all. So I'm just going back and forth. And if you want, you can, rather than if you prefer, and you don't want to go back and forth, you can take your ends and um, weave them in around the outside edge if you would rather do that. Which is what I'm doing right now. And keep on keep on keeping on weaving in the ends even though I've pulled out my my thread. Sometimes what I do is I'll actually work with the eye of the needle um, if it's uh, if the thread's too short. Uh, I'll work with the eye going as the business end of the needle. Okay, and now the next thing we're going to do is just tuck those ends in and you know, you could probably just um, if you wanted, you could probably just glue your backing felt on to your weaving, but I kind of like the security of stitching it on. So I'm just stitching that felt circle in place and within two shakes of a lamp's tail, this pin, this brooch, will be ready to wrap up and give to a friend or put on my own lapel. I think this one is going to be definitely, I'll wear this one as a shawl pin. So this one, I think I'm going to keep. The other ones, I might. Well, I'm definitely going to be using them as presents, but I might keep one or two of them myself too. And sometimes what I'll do too is if, if I'm wearing a pin or a brooch or something that I've made and someone says, ooh, I really like that, I'll just take it off and give it to them. And if you know you've got lots more at home that you've made, it's really fun to be able to do that. Okay, and again with this one, what I often do is I, see how I've come through the eye here? I like to just give it that extra stitch to just secure it a little bit more. And then I will stitch in place to secure it. Stitch through. I'm using black sock yarn to stitch this, but you can use regular uh, yarn of any description. I mean, um, thread, sewing machine thread or embroidery floss to do the stitching. And I'm just moving the stitches around a bit there. They were a bit, um, they had gone kind of cattywampus. They're just evening things up. And so that's how you can make brooches or pins woven on small looms, whether it's 
um, you know, your two inch or your three inch and make all kinds of wonderful brooches and pins and things. I'm going to grab this uh, juice lid now and stitch this pin. So the camera is nicely recharged and I, while the batteries were recharging, I took time and just finished up making up the last of the uh, the squares that I had woven. And they're, they really are fun to make. It could become very addictive. So your friends are probably going to get used to getting all kinds of lovely little woven brooches. I hope that you'll have fun with them and uh, that your friends will enjoy them too. So happy weaving and happy upcycling because upcycling is a good choice. Talk to you soon. Cheerio for now. And for more information, do go to my uh, blog, uh, www.tottytoxcrafts.com. Talk to you soon. Bye.